Brandon, is there any improvement with Austin Hayes? A little bit. He said his hamstring's been a little bit better. He's out there testing it right now. So hopefully he'll be available off the bench tonight. Um, but we'll see. He's doing some conditioning things and testing it with Sanders out in the outfield right now. Next is Rich Dubroff. Uh, Brandon, you know, you never designated a closer to, uh, to start the season, but it was pretty obvious that we'd see um, Valdez late in, the, late in the game. Who are, uh, from now on, who are we likely to see, you know, in the ninth inning? It's a difficult one just because we have so many guys that are, you know, having a tough few weeks. And, you know, Paul Fry right now is pitching the best out of anybody. Um, he's been our most consistent reliever really this past month. We had a ton of guys in April throwing the ball really well, and I was comfortable throwing a lot of guys in high leverage spots. Um, the ninth inning for me is a different inning than any, than any other inning. And um, it's, it's challenging. So with guys that have never done it before really in our bullpen and not – and we're not really pitching to pitching extremely well right now. It's going to be a mixed bag right now. Um, if Paul, if I don't use Paul Fry in a big spot in the seventh and the eighth, then you, you could possibly see in the ninth, but we've got to try to get there also. So I'm going to do the best I can. That's, that's the answer. John Mioli. On Valdez, have you noticed difference in his stuff or, or how he feels going to and out of outings this in, on, the, on the second day of a back-to-back? -back? No, he felt good yesterday. Um, no, I think he just had a tough couple of weeks. I mean, he was so good in April, so good the last couple of weeks of the season last year. Um, I just think you're seeing the change up, just hanging the strike zone longer than normal. And um, – you know, when he was lights out first at the end and really beginning of the year this year, he's getting so many swings and misses and weak contact, weak ground balls. The changeup was was really strike the ball changeup with the bottom would drop out and finish below the zone. Um, and now what you're just seeing, the, really, the when he's been hit here, the um, you know three or four outings has been the changeup just staying up in the zone a little little too long, and they're able enough to get, to get enough barrel on it. So he he's aware of it. He knows he's frustrated. He talks about it. He's trying to get back to, to what he was like in April, like a lot of our guys. Um, and, you know, hopefully he gets back there soon. Next is Joe Trezza. Brandon, D Dylan Tate starting a rehab assignment tonight. How many appearances do you think he'll need and what will his return do to the complexion of your bullpen and, and you just your options? Yeah, well, he is pitching tonight. We're going to, see how that goes and make a decision whether he needs another outing or two there or possibly bring it here. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how that goes tonight um, in Norfolk. Yeah. D Tate, you know, it would really improve our right on right. We don't, we don't, if you look at our bullpen, we just don't have um, a whole lot of strength with guys, right-handed pitchers that get right-handed hitters out and we face a lot of right-handed hitting lineups. Um, so D Tate historically has been a, a good right on right guy and, and that would definitely help us. Steve Molesky. Brandon, you look at Mal Castle last night. He had a great at bat mid game, deep count, base hit, some chase later in the game. You know, you see the good and the bad in one game. Uh, what is the team trying to do to help him get, you know, play discipline that you think he's going to need? Well, there's, there's drills and things they, they do in the cage every day. But besides that, it's just, you know, he's very aware. We talk about it a lot. Talk about him being on time with the fastball, not chasing breaking balls. You see a lot of breaking ball chase early in the count. You know, I talked to him the other day. He um, you know, takes Johnny Lester deep, grand slam, middle in cutter, great swing in a left center. And then his next at bat, two runners on, Lester's on the ropes. Um, oh, oh change up, kind of out of his shoes, swing, uh, head flying. And for me, I said, for me, like, that's, that's the difference right now. That's the next level is being able to keep your eyes in the strike zone, understanding what the pitcher is trying to do, not try to do too much, 
you just show that you get the ball 450 feet to left center on a middle end cutter where your eyes didn't leave the strike zone. And then the next at bat, you just get out, outside of yourself and try to do more um, instead of just taking the same approach. And I see that, that's why for me is that bats go in and out where you see a lot of times a really good at bat where you stand on the ball good. And then sometimes he just tries to do a little too much or um, where he doesn't recognize the, maybe the breaking ball as well. And that's what, for me, that's what you saw last night. I was really impressed with that one at bat and then the next two at bats just got away from him. We have time for one more from Brett Hollander. Hey, Brandon, you've seen obviously Tanner Scott come a long way since you got here. Does this look like the picture you saw when you first got here for one? And is there any way for him to reset and kind of get back to where he was earlier this year and last year? Um, well, he just needs a pitch. And, you know, you know, with Tanner, for me, he was so good in spring training and so good to start the year because he was just really just letting it go and not worrying about mechanics, maybe not worry about, um, not worry about anything except trying to throw the ball past the, by the guy. And so you saw a lot of hundreds in spring, you saw 99 hundreds and, and, uh, you know, the early part of the year. Now, like last night, was, the first pitch was 95 spiked. That just tells me that he's thinking too much and that he's trying to place the ball. He's trying to throw strikes instead of just being an athlete and go out and get after it and compete. And when he does that, you know, he's been really successful the last couple of years when there's traffic and I bring him in in a big spot to get somebody to get a hitter out. It's almost, I can't tell you how many times he's punched that guy out. And it's really because it's like a sprint. He's got one job. He's there to just go punch the guy out when he has a more of a longer outing or when I send him back out, that's when I feel like that's the next step for him is to be able to have that same mentality throughout an inning or go out, punch, sit, and then come back out and start the next inning, have that same mentality. He just isn't quite there yet, but that's something we need to continue to work on.